What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a video today where we're going to be discussing just the game and the series in general, right? I want to get some feedback from you guys. I want to do this little bit of a video where we discuss the game, discuss the kind of potential of the game, where the game is at at the moment. But I'm mostly, I want to, this is going to feature in into a bigger project that we are doing, which I will talk about at a later date, okay? But for now, I want to know two things, right? When you downloaded the game, when you actually started playing eFootball, whether you're a veteran of the series way back and downloaded the beta, tried the online performance test, or you played PES for years and then transitioned over to eFootball, or whether you've just literally downloaded the game in the last couple of weeks, right? Because a lot of people have jumped on in that August, September uh, transition over from the new game series. So whether it was from eFootball 23 to 24, or whether it was from FIFA 23 to EAFC 24. So a lot of people are trying out the game, which we'll show you in a minute. We are going to be taking a look at the official uh, eFootball, or the official PlayStation uh, website, which shows us the downloads and the top downloads sorted by the US and the UK, as we see here. So this is the, the data from the official PlayStation blog website where it shows you the most downloaded games per month based on US, Canada and EU. So it's split in between, right? So as I said, this video and this stuff that I'm collecting is going to, there is going to be a reason for it as to why I want to know when you downloaded the game, what your experience is with the game. And just to talk about these kind of figures and talk about what it could mean for the future of eFootball, right? Because at the moment, you're seeing a trailer here for the likes of Rebury, Burkamp, Drogba, right? There's a very good entry point in for anybody into this series, right? And I think the one really good thing that they've done in eFootball is they've made it really accessible to newcomers to the series and also for a regular conveyor belt of new players playing the whole time. You could download this game six months ago or you could download this game in six days time from now, right? Into the future. I'm talking to you from the future. But you, no matter when you download it, within a week of playing, you will be able to dominate and have a really, really strong team that can get you the ultimate rewards, which is Division 1 status, or to be able to clear all the events, or to be able to compete against guys that have been playing it for months, right? Obviously, skill level comes into it, connection comes into it, server issues come into it, all of that sort of stuff comes into it as to how you can actually, you know, progress in the game and modes. There is nothing really to play in the game at the moment apart from divisions, which we'll get into in a second. But in terms of if I was to text my friend that has never played eFootball before and said to him, listen, download eFootball within a week without spending a penny or even if he wanted to spend a few quid on a free-to-play game, he could have a very, very strong team if he gets a bit of luck and he's able to clear the events because they give you so much stuff just from logging in, just from playing the game daily, from winning the events. The problem is there isn't enough of it. But for a casual gamer, I think eFootball is a very, very, very kind of like fun experience if you're only dipping in and dipping out of it as part of your game and library, right? We have to remember, lads, right? I, I, I'm probably in the minority. I stream the game. I do content on the game. A lot of you guys watching me that are veterans of the series way back with Pez, you know, Pez 4, 5, 6, Oh, Thierry Henry, the glory days, Adriano. That was 20 years ago. There's a lot of people that have never heard of Master League, Edit Mode, and that, those guys have to be respected as well because they're newcomers coming in to give a brand new series a new try, okay? But the thing is, is that at the moment, I would say that it is skewed in favor of newcomers and for people to actually get eyes on. And I think that's what Konami's plan is, is to get as many eyes on the product as possible. And then if they download it, play it for a week and never play it again, when the next huge update drops, whether it's an offline career mode, whether it's eFootball 2025, whether it's edit mode, whether it's new features or whatever, people will have that recognition, even if they've only played five or six hours of it, or if they've downloaded and played it for 10 minutes, they'll still have that recognition compared to the brand recognition that was there with Pez, which was kind of tied to the past, right? So looking at it from a, like a, a business point of view, I think they've gonna, done a good job at that. They've done a good job at the entry point of people as well. But where we want to look at today, right, is we want to take a look at the downloads, right? So this is the official PlayStation blog where it shows you the most downloaded games and the most bought games on their stores from the US and Canada and, U and the EU, right? So you can see here that in June, eFootball 2023 was in sixth position. Now, if you look at the heavy hitters for the free-to-play downloadable games, you're always thinking, when you, even if you close your eyes, I would have said Fortnite, Warzone, and Fall Guys, Rocket League would have been on the top. Apex Legends as well, I would have said they would have been probably the top five. So eFootball in June was sixth, okay? In July, it actually stays in sixth, so it's shown a bit of consistency. 
And as you can see there, Apex Legends is still in ninth, okay? But Fortnite and Warzone, the two big heavy hitters. Obviously, you know, new updates coming out, new seasons, new events, whatever you want to what, want to say. But in August, you can see here that eFootball 23 actually falls down, okay? Now, the biggest one for eFootball, in my opinion, and they never feature in the US Canada. So in the three months that we just saw, there is no featured eFootball 2023 in the top 10 downloads. They're probably like in the top 20, but there is no data for that from what we can see on the official PlayStation blog website, which I'll leave a link in the description below. But from here, they actually drop down to eight, right? So when you are looking at this, you're kind of thinking to yourself, well, the, the main months for eFootball, in my opinion, right, need to be September, October, and December. And then they need to be able to carry that momentum through all the way until the next year, right? Until May, June, when they announce the game, get an uptick in that. But even the fact to be able to just be able to compete with Fortnite and with Warzone, I think a top five is huge just to get eyes on the game, right? Now, I've noticed, as you look at September here, eFootball 2024 has had a brilliant start. It was the second most downloaded game in the EU over the month of September, which is massive when you think of it, right? Call of Duty Warzone, obviously, with the new beta coming out, obviously a load of eyes on that. I mean, I re-downloaded Call of Duty Warzone. I think I re-downloaded The Sims. I, I, I had a few games on the back burner that I wanted to re-download. And obviously, eFootball 2024, that would have counted as people transitioning over as well in terms of putting their game from eFootball 23 to 24, right? But on top of that, with... Um, the, e the EU, we also have in the US, we've got eFootball 2024, which is there finally on the list. Now, I think that one is probably more valuable than the EU, okay? Because the, we, the, like FIFA has had such a stranglehold in the US at the moment and for the last couple of years that they just have never been able to like reach into that, right? Now, obviously, Messi going there, Messi being an ambassador and them having the, the license in, for the USL, right, the championship, I think that has obviously helped with the brand recognition. But... I want to know your thoughts. Like, what do you actually think of the game going forward in terms of when we look at the, the downloads here and stuff like that? I mean, obviously, when we go from September, um, if you can stay in the second or third position, I think the biggest thing at the moment is, as well as all having the entry point of having the the cards and stuff and being able to download the game. I mean, my buddy texted me the other day and he was like, he downloaded the game and he literally got, it was it last week, and he got Nedvid in like five spins, five free spins or something like that with the coins he'd earned from the events. Like you can get lucky in this game and I think the entry point is really good. But the problem is, is that once you get past that point, it's very hard to retain, I think, those players. So it probably makes sense that it's a lot of newcomers coming in. They might play for 10 minutes, they might play for 10 hours, or they could play for 100 hours, they could be hooked. But once you get to the divisions, there isn't really much to play for. So I want to know your thoughts. We're going to put them all together into a video for feedback. I want to know your thoughts. Two simple questions if you are leaving a comment. When you downloaded the game, right? How long you've played the game? And then maybe like your favorite thing and, and least favorite thing about the game. So one thing you love, one thing you hate about the game. And when you actually downloaded the game, what month you downloaded? Was it last week? Was it a year ago? Was it with the Pez series that you've literally played Pez? or a Konami football game every year for the last 20 years, such as me. Um, let me know your thoughts. And let me know your thoughts about those figures as well. I'll leave the link in the description below for the downloads to see. And yeah, that's it. Just a short kind of like catch-up video. I want to know your thoughts on it, and all will be revealed in a future video. So until then, I'll talk to you later. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll talk to you in a bit.